Assalamu alaikum dear researchers welcome to this lecture series on PLS SEM with smart PLS in this lecture series we will learn from the basics of PLS SEM to more advanced topics later on first of all i will start with what you should know when we are going to learn this PLS SEM you should have some basic knowledge about social science research what is quantitative research what are variables and how we hypothesize the various relationship that we will see in, in a while that how we can hypothesize various relationship and test them using smart pls and how smart pl is different from uh, regression analy analysis so you should have a bit of idea about what is statistics the basic of statistics things like mean mode median something that we mostly learn in our elementary schools or our colleges and preferably you should have some knowledge about regression analysis and it would be a plus point if you have already used some software to uh, perform regression analysis like spss demovi etc and i would also suggest that you should have some basic knowledge about excel software so that we can do some kind of data uh, screening and data collection uh, prior to this data analysis uh, in excel or spss so who can use pls sem it is very useful for researchers in the social sciences business and management professionals can use it for uh, the sake of uh, making some decisions now fear of terrorism is one variable that is an iv and psychological distress in other variable that is dv this is a simplest uh, relationship that we can hypothesize right so where does data from fear of terrorism and psychological distress come from obviously what i did is that i conducted a survey using some kind of questionnaire for instance in your screen you can see this is the questionnaire for the fear of terrorism nowadays i worry about my personal safety all the time i feel heightened tension when in crowded places like market university gathering i fear a terrorist attack will harm me physically or materially i think the biggest threat to me is of terrorism so this is the questionnaire from which i collected data and these are the responses and these are close ended responses which i can easily convert into numeric values so we have these type of questions for all of our variables now this is the data that i have collected using a survey right we can collect data using surveys we can collect data using observation now the major point is that data should be in the form of a quantitative data it should be in the form of numbers so as you can see we have uh, some numeric data or if the data is not numeric actually i have converted it into numeric for example if you have different options like strongly disagree to strongly agree you can convert them into numbers that is called process of coding so i have various variables uh, the questions in this survey represent various variables like fear of terrorism it is for, it is represented by four questions the negative effect positive effect then i have instrumental support let me zoom in right so psychological distress that is my main db dependent variable emotional support so i have i have various variables and in this tutorial i'm going to show relationship between these various variables this basic hypothesis that fear of terrorism is positively related to psychological distress and i have shown you that this data that is of actually 121 respondents this data is which i am going to analyze this hypothesis upon right so this is something that we can do in regression analysis as well for example psychological distress is equals to beta not plus beta 1 fear of terrorism plus error term but if i complicate this hypothesis a little bit and add another hypothesis like complicate this model with one iv and two dvs okay this is again pretty straight forward fear of terrorism relates to psychological distress negative effect relates to psychological distress okay let's make it a bit more complex and add a mediation hypothesis such that i say that fear of terrorism directly relates to psychological distress but fear of terrorism also uh, relates to psychological distress through negative effect such that it first effect increases the negative effect and then negative effect in turn increases psychological distress mediator is a variable which comes in between iv and dv to explain the relationship more clearly so here we have hypothesized that there is a direct relationship this path over here you can see is the direct path and then we have an indirect relationship between fear of terrorism and psychological distress through negative effect okay what about moderator we can also say that fear of terrorism and psychological distress the relationship is moderated by emotional support such that if there is more emotional support 
then we have a weak relationship and if we have less emotional support then we have a strong relationship we can also add moderators and mediators simultaneously right so we can say that we have uh, for instance we have uh, a mediation and we have a moderator we can also have moderator over here right we can also have a moderator on this relationship and we can also have a moderator basically on this relationship so we can have a moderator on any relationship between uh, a variables or this is variable uh, iv this variable is dv and the negative effect is our mediator so we can have multiple moderators and as you can see in our later videos that we can also have moderated mediation that is what we say the indirect effect is actually moderated by a third variable sometimes it happens that we can also compare a model on the basis of some categorical variable like gender and these are actually what i'm why i'm showing you all these relationship is as the relationship become complex there are multiple ivs there are multiple dvs we can have multiple dvs as well so we can have more than one dv dependent variable in a model it becomes very easy and straight forward to evaluate these type of complex models using a structure equation model because in essence a structure equation modeling which is actually a second generation techniques enable researchers to analyze relationship between multiple variables simultaneously it is an extension of multiple linear regression because we can also evaluate some of these relationships like uh, iv dv relationship or moderator relationship using spss and we can also evaluate the moderation and mediation using process macro and spss as a matter of fact process is also incorporated in smart plus 4 uh, uh, in the latest the 4 version but what we say is that simultaneously we can analyze this relationship when we are using structure equation modeling right so this structure equation modeling basically includes both cbscm or uh, pls scm so let's take a comparison we have first generation techniques which is cluster analysis exploratory factor analysis multi dimensional scaling which is uh, more uh, tilted towards exploratory research then if it's a con confirmatory research we have analysis of variance logistic regression multiple regression and cfa the second generation techniques which basically scm to evaluate this relationship is partial least square equation structure equation modeling pls scm and covariance based structure equation modeling cbscm uh, pls scm is more tilted towards exploratory research but recently it has been widely used in confirmatory research as well because to test the hypothesis it gives us more uh, prediction based variance so it is also a good source to test the hypothesis right in confirmatory research where we make up hypothesis or we want to test an existing model uh, cbscm is more preferred technique but recently as the results are more overlapping and there is no big difference between the uh, uh, beta results of pls scm cbscm so Uh, these techniques can be used for uh, cpls scm can be used for exploratory research as well but other well known software obviously smart pls is the most well known software for uh, pls scm then wap danko and we have r package as well for cbscm once again mos eqs m plus and now very recently smart pls for the latest version has also incorporated the beta version of uh, uh, cbscm in its uh, software as well then we have lavan r package and jamovi scm package So as i was talking about theoretical model what happens in in a hypothetical deductive research sometimes we uh, adopt a model for example this is technology adoption model and then we make our own proposed model adding some variables adding some changes or amendments to that existing variable so for example as you can see that i have self efficacy and optimism as my ivs in this technology acceptance model So when I say that I have data collected from survey or experimental data or observational data, but the data should be the form of numbers, the nominal and ordinal scales are basically more useful for the categorical data. So these, if I'm using these scales, especially nominal scale, it would be very hard for me to take that variable as independent or dependent variable, or even as a mediator. Yes, I can do a multi-group analysis or segment-based analysis used on nominal data. for ordinal data sometimes if i have more categories and we consider them more continuous type of data we can use them as iv or dv but again it's not that recommended 
one special type of ordinal variable that we can also consider an interval variable and it's more widely used the likert scale or the likert type questions that we can actually consider them as interval or more ordered uh, scales so that uh, we use it as a continuous or metric data so what are the prerequisites requisites if we want to use a likert scale or a likert type scale as an interval data or a metric or continuous data the main points that we need to remember is that one it should be equal distance considered as equal distance for example i would say that the distance between categories 1 and 2 that is strongly disagree and uh, strong is disagree is same as between categories 3 and 4 same as categories 4 and 5 so i am actually saying is that a step ahead from strongly disagree to disagree is same as a step ahead from disagree to neutral number 1 number 2 is that scale should be symmetric for example the neutral is a midpoint and then we have two options uh, positively and two options negatively that is behind the neutral point so interval scale if you have other uh, variables for interval scale like centigrade scale which is not actually zero but we have some kind of uh, a number that is continuously increasing for 1 point 2 point 3 point then we can use them as ivs and dvs in smart pairs for ratio scales we have something that is a, a zero uh, like actual zero number uh, like money spent on purchasing new products your age or something like that or a number of failures number of success that can have zero as a meaningful value and that can have more uh, numbers that can be used as iv and dv so when i am making those measurements uh, the important thing to remember is that there are some type of constructs actually smart pls or pls scm actually considers that we uh, identify relationship between the latent constructs what are latent constructs latent constructs are those constructs which cannot be directly measured or we also call them unobservable variables on the other hand these latent constructs are measured through some means of measurement that we have defined for example in the survey we have various questions to measure those latent constructs so if you have a latent construct of a life satisfaction this will be measured by these five questions now these five questions are also called indicators items manifest variables or observed variables mostly we use the term indicators when we are talking about sem and these are the variables on which we apply the measurement model we also call them variable like this question is variable number 1 variable number 2 variable 3 but what type of variable these are observed variables and these variables formulate a latent construct or unobserved variable so how does these observed variables are converted to latent constructs this is what we call calculating the composite variables also known as linear combination of several variables that are chosen based on the research problem at hand in essence if i show you this uh, sample uh, model in scm with both the structural model that is the relationship between the latent constructs and the measurement model that is the indicators that are actually the data we have collected uh, now we can see that these indicators and these weights w or these l uh, these loadings are basically calculated using the pls uh, algorithm right so pls algorithm what it does is uh, let's not go into too much detail but what it does it it that first of all it calculates uh, these uh, summation based weights and then iteratively it calculates these loads until there is no further changes so what happens is that it gives us different loads for each uh, indicator so this is how uh, the pls algorithm is actually different from simple regression because in simple regression it is just the summation based score whereas in pls algorithm we get different loads and different weights now as you can see in this model we have two types of variables number one is the variable in which the indicator the arrow is from the indicator to the variable and in other types the arrow is from the variable or the latent construct to the indicators now these right side on the right hand side we we know that this is called basically reflective these are reflective right and these are called on the left hand side these are called formative so let me show you the picture from reflective and formative in reflective theoretically we say that all indicators are actually uh, 
reflecting the one main construct right so if we omit one indicator there is not much change because the rest of the indicators will be reflecting the same construct and generally if we say the questions are actually more or less identical they are actually mirroring the one same thing whereas in formative what we say is that all the indicators are jointly forming one construct that is if we change one or more indicator the construct or the definition will be changed this is called formative as you will see that mostly uh, the trend is to use reflective constructs if we go through different surveys we will say the questions are such, like, such that uh, if we omit one or two questions the sense of the meaning of the construct remains the same but i will show you the uh, example for a formative construct when i will uh, in uh, demonstrate the higher order constructs in reflective and formative manner so what is the difference between a reflective and formative the reflective constructs the indicator reflect the characteristics of the construct arrows are from latent construct to indicators they are interchangeable they can be deleted and there we use loadings in formative the indicators form the constructs arrows are from indicators to the latent constructs they are not interchangeable and we use weights here is an example from here at all 2014 if we have a, a variable or a latent construct about quality of hotel and if the questions are such that i appreciate this hotel i am looking forward to staying in this hotel i recommend this hotel to others it looks like more a reflective construct on the other hand if we divide these attributes on three points the service the personnel and the rooms which means if we delete one of these constructs the whole concept of the quality will be changed so it depends upon the researcher that whether they are defining the construct as a more formative or as a reflective so once again if we see this path model and let's make some understanding that we have some internal uh, model inner model which we call the structure model and then we have the outer model which we call the measurement model these are actually the questions that are collected through some means and are quantitative in nature so what we do is that we basically first evaluate the measurement model and then we move to the structural model this is a two step procedure in sem two step procedure okay some terms to remember measurement model which is outer model it can be formative it can be reflective it can be mixed formative and reflective then we have structural model which is based upon some structural theory some hypothesis are developed or why and in which directions variables are related how they related do we have some mediator do we have some moderator etc then we call in scm the exogenous variables are those independent variables where endogenous variables are the dependent or mediator variables or those variables to which some type of arrow is coming towards right some like they are not independent they are dependent upon some other variable in the model 